In part three of the video series, I'm going to go over how to detect and track lanes with your Raspberry Pi. Now here is the original video recorded of the car driving. And following that, I will go into the code. So the following is the code that I, that was developed for detecting the lanes in the video. I, I developed this with the help of the Udemy fully self-driving car course that I took. This is in the Python coding language, and the libraries I use in this are the OpenCV library, so the computer vision library, the NumPy, and the matplotlib.pyplot library. Um, I'll get back to these functions as we work through the code. So beginning with, this is the main code. I begin by loading the video as a cap variable um, that are used as I re recorded from the car's Raspberry Pi camera. And then I open up the new video, open up a new video and write out this video with the new detected lanes as a .mp4 file. And it's gonna, and I'm writing this vi new video of a 640 by 480 pixel size video frame. So begin with this while loop where I do cap is opened, which is basically opening up that, it's loading that video that I recorded from the Pi camera and inside this while loop, I do cap.read, so I'm reading in a frame. And the return values is I get a frame and a ret, which the ret basically stands for initially when the video is first opened, um, the frames don't come through clearly. And so that the ret returns false at the beginning. So as soon as ret returns true or equals true that variable, then that means the frames are fully loaded and are being captured correctly. So because of that, I say if the ret is true, meaning that the frames are coming in clearly and correctly. Inside here, I pass in frame into my canny function, which canny up here, that function, it takes in the image, which is the frame I just passed in. I take that image and I convert it to grayscale. And with that grayscale image, I then call the OpenCV function canny, which is doing canny edge detection on the image to find all the edges inside the image. Then I return that new canny image variable, which contains my gray image with those edges detected. And it, down here back in the main code that is being returned as a canny image variable, I pass that canny image into the function called region of interest. The region of interest basically is filtering out the unnecessary parts of, the, of each frame and only focusing on the edges that had to do with the lanes that we're looking at. So because of that, I find out the height and the width of my image that I pass in, which is again, that black and white, that grayscale Kenny image. And then in here, because images are originally upside down, where the height is actually the bottom of the image. So the top of the image is zero when it comes to the height and the bottom is the full height. And then the far left is zero for the width and the far right is that full width. So that's what these variables are showing where the height is the bottom of the image and the width is the far right of the image. And then I make a square using the numpy array function where I pass in the four vertices of the square with the first vertice being zero as in the width. So we're on the far left and height is the bottom zero to 280. So we're still on the far left, but we're going up 280 pixels and then the third vertice is on the far right so the width minus five pixels um, that's because I had some unnecessary noise on the far right of my of each frame and then still 280 up and then I'm at the same spot on the far right and going down to the bottom right corner with that so that's just basically I'm basically drawing a square in the bottom half ish of the frame and then I do zeros like I create a mask that are all zeros, the same size of my image that I pass in. So again, that canny image. And then I do something called fill poly. So the mask and the square that I made and 255 is white. So basically I'm filling, I'm filling everything outside of the square and making it and blacking it out and just keeping and just making the bottom part white, so all ones basically. And I do a bitwise and, which is combining the mask and that image, the canny image, 
where it's combining the two, doing a bitwise and function in the OpenCV library, and basically making anything that's outside of that square that I drew, making the, the intensity values or the pixel values to zero, so I can only see the lanes that I'm focusing on or the bottom part of the image. And that I just called the masked image and I returned that. Then now that I have that masked image that I returned from the region of interest, I call it the cropped image. And then I use the huff lines p function from the OpenCV library, which that what that basically does is it it's a function already written in the OpenCV library. It takes in the cropped image, and then with the canny edges that was that were found, it basically draws lines on each of those edges, and that and it returns all those lines that it drew on those edges with with high intensity peaks between each of the edges and then from that so that was that just creates a lot of different lines but i want to just have two solid lines because those are the two lanes so what with that i pass in my original frame so now again this is the colored frame that i got initially from the beginning and then i pass in those lines that i that i retrieved from the huff lines p function <clears throat> And I, and I pass those into the average slope intercept function, which that basically takes in the, uh, from there with the average slope, I pass in the image and the lines. And to sum this up quickly, it's basically taking each of those lines, getting the, the bottom corner vertices of those lines, so the x1, y1, so the bottom, um, it's basically the coordinates of the bottom of one point of the line, and these are the x and y coordinates of the other end of the line. And with those coordinates, I call I do the np dot average function with these left fit with those lines, where these lines that I'm doing is I'm getting a slope, and an intercept, which is basically that's what makes up the line based on those based on those vertices that I got earlier from the two points that mark the end of the lines. And then with that left and right line, standing for the left and right lanes, I just create, I use np.average to get the average of those lines. And then this make coordinate function is written to take in the line parameters, which are gonna be this left fit average, as well as the image. And what it does is it takes in those line parameters, which contain a slope and an intercept, as we know from earlier. That's what we got from here, the slope and intercept. And then from the image, based on the image size and the location of the different pixels in the image, we draw, we get the new coordinates of those lines where they fit on the image where the lanes are. And then at the end, I return the left line and right line as an array. And with that returned line, those are the average slope intercept, average lines, I then call the display lines function, which, which takes the original frame and those new average lines. So it's no longer a bunch of lines. It has two solid lines for each of the lanes. And basically with the display function, I take it and overlay them. I lay them on top of each other, calling the OpenCV line library, where or sorry, the line function, which takes the coordinates of those lines, those average lines that I got from the earlier function, and draws that line on top of the image. And this right here is just the RGB saying zero red, 255 green, and zero blue. So it's going to be drawing green lines with a five that stands for the width of the line. And I return this line image, which is this line drawn on top of the image. So now this should be everything we need. Then this is just adding a weighted, so it's creating, it's a balance between the frame and the lines drawn. It's just creating a good weighting so we can see the lines clearly as well as the frame that's been underlaid beneath the lines. And then we show that frame. Then we write out that frame to the new video. And it just continues to loop through that where we're going through each frame, drawing these lines on the frame and saving that new frame with lines drawn on it as an mp4 file.